Hello, fellow humanoids. Welcome to our year-end update of 2019. Once again, it is not yet the end of the world, and it won't be, being as I am sending this update from three years out in the future. I didn't actually have time to pump an update out back in 2019, so I'm doing it now from the future and sending the video back in time using a digital quantum time travel port. So, we know you're busy and we're crazy busy too, so to save us all time, I have a plan. We will do our best here to fill you in on the latest of our ministry as succinctly as possible in a kind of bullet pointed version, if you will. So current ministries, Elevate, our English club Elevate begin has been going strong for something like seven years or so now. Now, if you feel uh, that it genuinely helps your English, raise your hand. Yes, you Okay, cool, cool. And if you just come here for the free cookies, raise your hand. We have a few honest people. Every semester, the format changes a bit as we get new ideas or try new things, and many of the faces change too. It's, it's a um, college city, so you know students are coming and leaving all the time. And there's a high number of people that, are, that try to move out of Ukraine every year, so it's it's one of the only places in the world with a decreasing population, or one of few. So anyhow, um, we use the English club to meet new people and meet their felt need of learning English and practicing it with Americans. Two months ago, there was a couple from Calvary Chapel, Philadelphia, here in Odessa. Um, he's a retired man who's doing some teaching English here on the side. He helped us out, him and his wife, for three or four weeks at Elevate. So. If you're ever looking for a ministry opportunity in Odessa, there's a lot that we can do any time of year. It doesn't matter when you want to come, whenever it's convenient for you, there's lots to do, and we can plan an event if you want to come and possibly bring a, a team of three people or 10 people. There's a lot we can do any time of year if we know in advance when you're coming. So let us know if you'd like to join us here for a short-term trip. Uh, the goal of the English club is to build relationships with new people and invite them to other events, to invite them to church and share Christ with them through relationships. It's a very patient ministry. A decent percentage of people that come to Elevate wind up uh, going to English camp where they hear a lot of the Bible or they come to other events that we put on. Um, but few of them wind up in church. A few of those that do wind up in church may sometimes later actually leave the church but there are some that become members that faithfully walk with Christ through the years. So thank God for that. It's, it's the funnel, you know, the funnel ministry, I guess. So let's pray for God to make the spout at the bottom of the funnel bigger. As you might know, we work closely with our pastor, George Kajan, and a few missionaries from Mission to the World, MTW, Bob, his wife, Andrea, and Robin. Occasionally, we have other Americans pop in as well. Unfortunately, our friend Robin will be leaving Ukraine this year to do missions in another part of Europe. We will miss her. A new MTW missionary will be joining the field in Odessa soon named Lauren, who we've been told has plans to help with Elevate. So that would be cool uh, to have a new face in there. And we've also recently had a girl who works with crew named Ellie So, and uh, possibly her friend commit to helping us with Elevate. Uh, she wants to help us with some ideas for Elevate in 2020, so maybe we'll do things a bit different next semester. We don't know yet, but we're into switching things up now and then and trying new things. Right now, we're getting ready for our year-end Christmas party for Elevate and a small New Year celebration at home with some Christian friends. Lighthouse Church, if you don't know, uh, over a year ago, we began planning a church plant with our Pastor George, who we call Gorik, uh, and a young man attending seminary, Misha. Lera's been incredibly busy with that, leading the worship team. It's been a blessing for me too, picking out worship songs, uh, many of them having to be translated into Russian. Lera's mom and George help with the translation, and some churches have already been asking permission to use a couple of the songs. Of course, they're not our songs. We're just happy to be a part of blessing Ukraine in this way. Last week, Lera and I began writing our first modern hymn together, 
which we hope to share with you all soon once completed. The church began in early September and takes place in the same historic Presbyterian church building as our mother church, but has a more contemporary style. The preachers include pastors George and Valeri, who are the ordained leaders, Misha, who's attending seminary, Bob, who's the regional director for MTW, and myself. I'm also in charge of all the PowerPoints and video. It took a while to figure out how to get decent sound without having a high-level recording system in such an echoey room made for an organ, but I think I've got it worked out now. I tried to convince the elders that the organ is an overgrown paperweight and we could sell it and use it for something more practical. Uh, yeah, but they're not here in that. Um, different generations. So the worship team is blessed to have Edward, who has studied music for years, and he's very skilled at rewriting songs and creating pads when we're missing an instrument or two for a song. Highly, highly skilled musician. You can observe our church's young and growing services at our YouTube channel by following the link in this, the description. Coram Deo. A year and a half ago, Lita began studying at Coram Deo, a, bibl a biblical counseling training ministry based in Kiev. She has another uh, year and a half to go, and she loves it. It's helped her minister to other girls in different situations, and I'm personally very encouraged to see her going beyond her assigned work Digging into books, uh, listening to podcasts, and watching lectures to learn more about counseling uh, specific people God has brought into her life. She took the initiative to invite those in town studying that are studying with her and other alumni who've already graduated to come to our flat once a month to learn and practice biblical counseling together. Lyra has found this of immense value as there's a couple ladies there who are very experienced and gifted in this discipline. So that's really cool. Our old plans. Old plans. Anyone who's followed our ministry for any amount of time knows that my aim in founding MIA was to start a gospel-driven city rec center for youth and invite people to join us on the mission field. We've been blessed to have some people join us for short-term outreaches, but it's been very difficult finding people who want to serve here long-term. It's even getting difficult getting people to come uh, short term. We were unsuccessful in even coming close to raising the needed funds for such a thing, and we've just been overwhelmed trusting God to provide for ourselves, barely getting by, and tightening our belts more and more recently. This does not mean we've given up on the idea altogether. It just means we believe God's plans are better than ours could ever be, and ultimately, we're just here to spread the gospel and make disciples. So however that happens is great. So for now, our focus is not on the center or raising funds or recruiting people or sports ministry or the homeless outreach that we wanted to do. If you would like to help us make this a reality, we've calculated we need $3 million to start and about $150,000 per year to staff and maintain it above and beyond any revenue that we would generate with such a facility. Of course, this is a guesstimation but it's an educated guesstimation, and as things are rolling, those uh, numbers would be adjusted. Today, we're just focused on being thankful, content, and faithful with what God's placed in front of us. And right now, that's primarily Lighthouse Church. If God wants us to start a center, He can get that going with nothing more than prayer and some waiting. If He doesn't, well, we have lots of work right here in front of us, teaching, worshiping, and planting seeds. Uh, new ministries. Recently, I began rethinking and praying how I might be discipling others. I really love spending lots of time digging and preparing for upcoming sermons. You can read my script for my sermon on the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which I'll preach this Sunday, or you can listen to the voiceover of it later made for me so I can practice preaching it in Russian with good pronunciation. We're not sure if this will be a success. It's going to be my first time, but I'm, I'm going to try. Normally, I would script a sermon out, then run through it a few times, and then transform it back into a different form of an outline, and then preach off of that. But I'm not to the point where I can do that in Russian, so just doing the best I can with what I can do. I considered recently stopping Elevate, and instead organizing other outreach events, or getting out to other events in the city myself to meet new people. But Lera assures me that Elevate should continue because... There's too many people who love it 
too much. And so for now, we'll just carry on. Lately, God's given me a desire to learn Russian and go to seminary. Although I'm not a big stickler on seminary, as I believe most education systems are costly and or inefficient. And someone with a passion can learn on their own. So I've decided in 2020 to begin reading books and teaching them in 10 to 20 minute videos on our MIA YouTube channel. I think I could learn more that way faster and cheaper than I could in any seminary, especially with all the free resources online nowadays. And I could bless many others in my learning process. Side work. English lessons. As I mentioned, we've been having to tighten our belts some lately. So last year, Leda began teaching a small English class out of our flat once a week. It's just six students, but they get a good price on the lessons by doing it in the group. And Leda makes uh, about 100, maybe 120 bucks a month. But last week, her students told her that they'd like to do it twice a week now. So that might nearly double. It's not much, but it does help. Uh, last week, our friend Bob ran into a lady who works for a U.S.-based trucking company at a call center here. They need a couple Americans to come there for a few hours each week to teach the phone operators American culture, customer service, correct ways to say things professionally on the phone. So we just walk around, we listen in on calls, and we help them with that one-on-one. -on -one. I began this last week, and that will help with, I don't know, one or two hundred bucks a month. Maybe 300 if I end up filling in for Bob sometimes. Uh, we're just not 100% sure how long they're going to need us around there. Maybe it will be a short-term thing, maybe long-term. No telling right now. My book. Many of you know I was writing a book on Bitcoin. That's pretty much done, almost. But I did become a little discouraged with it. Firstly, because I would blog about Bitcoin several times. You can s check out my blogs at the link below if you want. But... Not many people seem to care too much. Uh, I had, I've, I've all my life, I've been complimented on my writing and so I write, but when I do write, not many people care too much. Maybe it's just a matter of continuing to do it for months and months, but I had a hard time building any real following. I maybe could have if I stuck with it, but with my priority being ministry, it's too hard to devote to full time. I've been told by people in the industry that the book is very good. One guy even said that it could be the industry standard. So I've been trying to sell it to someone with a bigger platform, and I could just remain a ghostwriter. If that doesn't work, I'll go ahead, just wrap it up, and publish it soon in my own unknown name. And next, our peanut butter business. Earlier this year, we finally got our peanut butter business off the ground, uh, sort of, when our business partner and friend Andre would go to an outdoor market when there was good weather, with a couple hundred jars, I don't know, two or three hundred jars, he would always sell out. However, it still wasn't enough to make any money to speak of. We decided to focus on distribution to store chains, as we know a couple friends who have connections in this area. But the paperwork for such things moves very slowly in Ukraine and could take up to 18 months. So everything's kind of on standstill for the most part, other than selling a few jars of peanut butter to friends. So we're just waiting for those papers so we can move forward with that. Accelerate Books. I came across a Christian company who does almost the exact thing that I had the idea to do, only rather than summarize books in video form, they do it in PDFs and charge a monthly membership. They've done a lot of excellent books. I just applied to be one of their book summary writers, and I do really hope that I'll get this job. One book a month brings in two to three hundred dollars. I'm not sure if They'd uh, let me do one per week, but that would help a lot and I would love doing it. I could get paid to do what I was already planning to do, get paid to essentially put myself more or less through seminary. They're doing an awesome giveaway right now, which expires December 31st. They're giving away the complete set of Puritan paperbacks, which I already have, you can see behind me on the shelf, and Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones' Romans Commentary Series. So be sure to get in on this, just follow the link below, and when you enter, I get extra entries. So hook me up. We will see what they say. If not, I can still make these on my own and maybe I'll be some competition breathing down their neck. Free weekly videos will outpace paid PDFs any day. 2021. 
In spring of 2021, I plan to come to the States for a few months, networking, sharing about our work here and our vision. I'd love to come see you and possibly visit your church. I'll likely come alone just because it's much easier for me to travel alone, bussing around and sleeping on couches if needed and such. That way, later I can stay here and keep the ministry going with Elevate and Lighthouse and take care of the dogs. Hopefully, uh, she'll be able to come for a couple weeks and visit me while I'm there. A few prayer needs. Uh, first of all, pray for Mission Impact Alliance. Pray that God would send laborers into the harvest field and pray that he would provide for us spiritually and financially all that we need to continue in the work here. Secondly, please pray for our many friends here that are not walking with God. Pray for that funnel, that the spout at that bottom of the funnel would grow bigger that we would see people coming to the Lord. And really, I just desire to see people hungry to learn about God, to know God, um, hungry to serve God. Just curious and and eager, eager to learn. So would you join me in prayer for that, please? And then thirdly, pray for our church plant, that the church would continue to grow and that you know we'd be protected from any attacks and um, just for God's blessing and provision there and um, that the Holy Spirit would guide us in our teaching and in our decisions. Uh, one last thing before I go, I'd, I'd like to ask you to consider. When people are, are faithful on the mission field longer, they're unable to build new contacts back home, and year after year, they've asked the same people for support. So when people drop off, they really have little else where to look. And many missionaries go back home every couple of years, but we usually wait much longer. Every five years, I think I've been doing a real route. I was going back to go fishing, but that's not the same thing. But every year that we're on the field, that's one more year that we've invested and grown as full-time missionaries. And it's one year less that we spent off the field building a career or a particular job skills. Although I have learned quite a bit about media and design, it's, but it's something I do for ministry. It's not for a career. This isn't to say that God won't take care of us no matter what, but we are called here, we believe. We are here and we're serving God here. And at least now for and for the foreseeable future, until we go home to be with the Lord, uh, that's the plan. We could really use your prayers and your support. Perhaps you would be willing to share Tell somebody about our ministry, your family, your friends, or your pastor, perhaps. We'd really love to build a partnership with a church or two that can send over teams to help us with outreaches. Teams of three people, teams of 10 people, something like that. We really appreciate you and your friendship and your uh, fellowship in Christ. We're not able to stay in touch as often as we like, but we do love you and we do appreciate you. And, and at times for some of you, we do pray for you as well. If you do have prayer needs, please let me know. I would love to lift you up in prayer. Let me close here with a quote that I read this week in a book summary by Accelerate Books of a book called You Are What You Love by James K.A. Smith. The sending at the end of the worship service is a replay of the original commission of humanity as God's image bearers because in Christ and in the practices of Christian worship, we can finally be the humans we were made to be. So we are sent out to inhabit the sanctuary of God's creation as living, breathing images of God. We bear his image by carrying out our mission to cultivate creation and invite others to find their humanity in this story. Remember that wise kings still worship Jesus, the King of Kings. God bless and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Say Merry Christmas, baby. Good boy! Good boy. <laughs>